Okay, I've uh, started the recording. Can uh, can you hear me, those of you who are Zooming? Yes, sir. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, uh, before we get into the um, material, uh, I did want to say one thing about the exam. Uh, we had deferred it until uh, Tuesday of next week, but we're running even further behind than I anticipated. So we're not going to have it next Tuesday. We're going to defer it either to Thursday of next week or Tuesday of the, the following week. Uh, and I will um, give you an update on that after class on uh, Thursday. All right. Um, so you should be able to see the screen here on maximizing profit. As I've said before, this chapter is just really, really important. Basic ideas that will uh, be relevant from here on. So you want to understand each thing we go through. When I ask a question, uh, I encourage you to, to respond and, and uh, answer. Uh, but if you don't respond verbally, ask yourself, do I know the answer to this? And if you do, uh, and your answer is right, put a check on your paper <clears throat> that will remind you, he asked a question about this. And if you don't know the answer, put a big X that will remind you this is uh, something that it's likely to be on the exam and that I didn't know the answer to. Because right? these are so many things about profit maximization that are so basic and fundamental, you just have to understand it uh, well. <clears throat> to review, last time. Okay, we have our, uh, our basic uh, um, graph showing the uh, situation is faced by uh, a competitive firm. Remember, we're only talking in this chapter about firms under uh, competitive conditions. Price taker firms means the same thing. They have no control over the price. They take the price as given, but they get to decide how much to produce. And we said that profit will be at a max will be maximized if they produce where? That's right. Marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Remember I said, if you want a tattoo, that's something that will be helpful to you. Uh, on the exam, I will let you use tattoo, economic tattoos on, on, on the exam. Uh, MR equals MC. That you want to be able to recall that instantly because it's so important. Where does the firm want to produce? They want to produce for marginal revenue equals marginal cost because that will give them maximum profit. And I emphasize remembering that because there are so many other things that sound very similar. Should the firm produce where price equals average cost or price equals average variable cost? Uh, you know, there are a lot of things that, that kind of maybe sound plausible. You don't have to give any thought to this. If the question is what quantity will give maximum profit, it is always MR, it's where MR equals MC. It's true in this chapter, in the next chapter, it's true always. MR equals MC. So this firm could produce as much as they want. They will get maximum profit if they look at each out, each unit and say, well, what's the, if I produce that, what does that add to my cost? If I produce that, what does that add to my revenue? And if marginal revenue is greater than marginal cost, 
that means that unit will add to profit so you produce it and then you go look at the next unit and if it will add to profit you produce it you look at the next unit you keep going and as the firm is expanding and producing more marginal revenue is staying the same because in a competitive market price or marginal revenue will just be equal to the price okay? so the price doesn't change but as the firm is producing more what's marginal cost doing marginal cost is, also marginal cost is going up so as it's producing more and more each additional unit is adding uh, a, a larger amount to your cost until you get to the uh, eighth unit that last unit adds $50 to um, to the firm's cost it adds $50 to the firm's revenue so on that very last unit we said really indifferent between producing that last unit and not producing it our convention is to say he'll go ahead and produce it okay the important thing is that for every unit prior to that last unit, marginal revenue was greater than marginal cost. So all of those units added to profit. And if the firm went beyond that, produced more, its revenue would go up, but its costs would go up by more because for the ninth unit, if it produces that, its, rev its cost will go up by, what, about $70 its revenue would go up by only 50. So its profit would go down. So it doesn't want to produce the ninth or the 10th or any of these others. It wants to stop at eight. True or false? Under capitalism, firms only care about making profit. So there's no reason to think they will respond when consumers change what they want. They will do what's good for them not for consumers. Is that true or false? I think false. Okay, we have a vote for false. What are we assuming about firms under in, in a capitalist system, in a market economy? We're it's assuming true. they are focused on profits. They are trying to make profit for themselves, but what do they have to do in order to achieve that goal? They have to deliver something that consumers want. They have to figure out what consumers want and give it to them. So it's absolutely true that their goal, their, the focus of their effort is on profit. They have to do that to survive. But that doesn't mean that what they do is not good for consumers. And what we did at the end last time, we'll go back through it uh, now, will show that as they do what will give them profit, they are simultaneously doing what will give consumers what they want. It's not a question of serving themselves or serving the consumers. They achieve their objective of making profit by giving the consumers what they want. Uh, we, and we looked at a situation where the demand for something increases. Okay? And so really we're asking, when consumers now want more of something, are producers going to say, eh, what do we care about you? We just want profit. We're gonna ignore what you want. Or are the producers going to respond? Okay? And we will see that there's very good reason to believe the producers will respond uh, and the consumers will end up getting what they want, not because the producers are trying to help them, but because it's in the producer's interest to give the consumers what they want. Okay? Um, we're not saying the producer should be only interested in profit. Uh, as a framework for thought, we're saying, let's assume that's all they're interested in. And we see that even under those conditions where the producers don't care about consumers, consumers are going to get what they want. And we saw that here 
you have a market, the market price is $50. I think this was oil, $50 per unit <clears throat> per barrel. Something happens where the demand for oil increases. Consumers want more oil. Are, the, are consumers going to get it? Well, if the producers, what is do what is in the producer's interest, then they will respond. Because as we see, the increase in demand will push the market price up. Okay? And with the price is the mechanism through which information is communicated. The higher price sends the signal to producers that consumers want more of this product. And so consumers, producers know consumers want more and producers have an incentive to produce more, not necessarily because they care about the consumers. They have an incentive to respond to this information. As we've just seen that when consumers want more, the price goes up, that sends the information to the producers and it creates an incentive to them, for them to respond because before the increase in demand, the price was down here at 50. The price was down here at 50. And this producer did what was in his best interest, maximized his profit by producing only eight units. But when consumers change their preferences or they want more of this product, that is communicated to the producers through the higher price. And when the price goes up, that means the price line goes up and marginal revenue is equal to the price. So the marginal revenue curve was here, it was horizontal at 50, now it's horizontal at 100. Producers are still going to do, they're doing the same thing in that they are looking for the quantity that will give maximum profit. But that quantity, which was eight before, is now going to be 10. Because the ninth unit, which has a marginal cost in here, say around 70, it was not profitable previously. So it didn't get produced. But now the consumers value it more and the, the price is 100, marginal revenue is now 100. The producers in deciding, should we produce that ninth unit or not, they choose to produce it because the marginal revenue from it is greater than the marginal cost. They produce it because it adds to their profit. Whereas the, consu the consumers don't care why it's being produced, but the consumers are going to get more of the product that they want because it is now profitable for the firms to respond. And this firm and all the other firms will choose to produce at a point like that where their marginal revenue and marginal cost are now equal. Notice if, if we had said back here, well, it's not fair for the price to go up. Let's keep the price down at $50 and, and help consumers. Then we would not have gotten the increase in output. For consumers to get more of the product they want, the price has to be allowed to go up. The price mechanism is the means by which producers are motivated to produce what consumers want. And if you think, uh, we're going to help the consumer by keeping the price down. You're doing exactly the opposite. You're preventing the producer from responding and producing more of the thing that consumers want. So question, if price increases, a firm will expand production. And you know why? Well, we don't really care about motivation. Okay? What's important is that Consumers want more, consumers are going to get more. Uh, what is their motivation most likely? Because it will make, they're, they're trying to make uh, profit for themselves. 
Um, be great to have a society where all the producers really care about the produce, the consumers, and really want to help them. Right? But we don't, economists don't believe that you can use the economic system to change the nature of people and cause them to value something they didn't value before. So we, we take people as they are. We tend to be more interested in ourselves than in other people. And a market economy makes a virtue of that uh, focus on, on self. Okay, any questions so far? Those points, you know, absolutely nothing in what we've done uh, with that is unimportant. It's all very important. You understand these points well, you should be very well prepared for the for the exam. Now, profits and the average cost curve. Okay. It it just notice all these different things we said about cost. Variable cost, fixed cost, implicit, explicit. Uh, average, marginal, total. I've got all these different measures of cost and they sound very similar. So pay close attention to the differences. Average cost. Um, notice a firm. Let's see. Okay. Everybody's familiar with an average. Uh, you, you, know, you figure out your course average. Uh, how do you find an average? Well, if you take the total of something, you divide by the number of units to so take the class average. I take the uh, what every everybody score add it together, divide by the number of exams for um, average cost. We just look at the total cost and we divide by the number of units being produced. Okay? When you find an average, you are um, spreading the cost evenly over some number of units. Uh, that's and, and you know, most people don't have much trouble thinking intuitively about an average. Marginal costs they have more trouble with. They're very, very different. Uh, a firm that produces the profit maximizing quantity is not guaranteed to make a profit. Remember we said we, we can assume that each firm is going to produce at that profit maximizing quantity but that's not a guarantee that they actually will make a profit. Right? Uh, and we're gonna see that as we look at um, average cost. Average cost of production is the cost per unit. Okay? And you find that just by taking the total cost and dividing by the quantity. So in mathematical terms, average cost is total cost divided by quantity, by the number of units. Average cost will change as the firm expands output. Right? Just we saw that marginal cost changes when the firm changes output. Same is true for average cost. But as the firm changes output, the average cost may go down, it may go up, it may stay the same. It can do different things. And here we have a, a table that we looked at before. Um, again, always look carefully at a table to make sure you know what, what data is there, just like with a graph. Got the quantity here, total revenue here. Um, it's a footnote. Most people aren't that comfortable looking at lots of graphs and data. The way you become comfortable with it is by looking at lots of graphs and data. There, there's no substitute. If you wanna be comfortable with the graph and the data on the exam, you need to spend a lot of time with it before the exam. And that's exactly the opposite of what people want. You wanna spend time with things that you're comfortable with, not things that make you nervous, but spending time with it before the exam is what prepares you so that you don't see anything on the exam that looks um, surprising. So here we got total revenue, total cost, profit, which is the difference between revenue and cost, 
Here we've got calculated marginal revenue. Remember, what's the definition for marginal revenue? Right. Let's just tighten it up a little bit. It's the change in total revenue divided by the change in quantity. Okay. Um, I would say create a, a card with these important relationships on it and look at it every day. Think about it every day. The way to be comfortable with these things is to look at them frequently. Uh, and the more you think, I don't want to do that, the, the greater the chance that that's exactly what you need to do. Uh, marginal cost, what's the definition of that? It's the change in the total cost over the change in the quantity. Exactly, the change in total cost over the change in quantity, which is also the extra cost of producing an extra unit. It means exactly the same thing. And then here we got change in profit. And then last column we have what we're now talking about, average cost, where you take the total cost, which is over here, and you divide by the quantity. Notice uh, the first average cost is here uh, for the first unit. Why don't we have an average cost for zero? If you divide something by zero, you only get zero. You mathematically, you, no, you don't get zero. If you divide something by zero, that is, that's an, what, what do we call that? A, uh, um, it's undefined. It's not an acceptable mathematical operation. Um, so it, there's nothing there because it's, it's not zero. When you, remember when you have an average, just think about it intuitively, you're taking some total and you're spreading it over some number of units. So if you got two units, you're taking the total and spreading it over two units. If you have zero units, how do you spread something over zero units? You can't even think about it. So that is undefined. But then as you produce more, you take in the total cost from this column, you divide it by the quantity, and it gives you the average cost. Notice what average cost does as the firm expands. When it produces only one unit, average cost is $34. If it expands and produces two, average cost drops tremendously to 20. Why, why is that? Is it an economy of scale? That would be, it's called an economy of scale. Uh, we'll talk more about that later on in I think chapter 13, but um, it has to do with fixed cost. Notice, this firm, if they don't produce anything, they still have a cost of $30. They have a fixed cost of $30. When they produce that first unit, the marginal cost of that first unit is very low. Marginal cost of the second unit is very low. But when you're talking about average cost, you're looking at the total cost. So if you only produce one unit, You've got all thirty dollars of that total cost of that uh, uh, fixed cost spread over one unit, so it's very high. When you produce that second unit, now your fixed cost is spread over two units. That's it's really the fixed cost that's giving you that huge drop in average cost. And as the firm expands and produces more, average cost gets lower and lower and lower to a point that here it starts eventually to go up. Is that the point of diminishing returns? No, no, we'll come back to that. Uh, but no, it's not the point of diminishing returns. Notice it, as the firm continues to produce, its average cost gets higher and higher and higher. How much should the firm Produce. Should a firm always try to minimize its average cost? That seems like a reasonable thing to do. Okay. Not the right answer, but it sounds like a reasonable thing to do. How much should the firm produce? Always and everywhere. 
produce where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. You have to burn that into your brain so that when somebody says, well, should the firm try to minimize its average cost? You don't say, or you, you don't say, well, sure. No, you say they should produce where MR equals MC. Nothing else, nothing else matters in determining what quantity to produce. We will see that average cost does matter, but it doesn't matter in determining the right quantity to produce. And this is why this material is kind of complicated because you got a number of things that matter, but they matter for different reasons. They matter in answering different questions. And so you got to remember, when do we use marginal cost? And when do we use average cost? Uh, and when do we use average variable cost? And at first, it's very confusing, but you look at it for long enough and it starts to become clear. Uh, <clears throat> should a firm always try to minimize its average cost? No. We'll see why in just a second. How does average cost relate to profit? Well, here we're going to see a really useful relationship to uh, understand and remember. We know the definition of profit, so total revenue minus total cost. Now, that just says profit, but what, what kind of profit are we talking about here? Accounting profit or economic profit? This is an, this is an economics class. It's, it, we're talking about, so if it just says profit, we're talking about economic profit. So we are subtracting all costs, which means we're subtracting the explicit costs and the implicit cost. As we go through this new material, you do want to, to tie it back into earlier material. You don't want to forget that. Um, <clears throat> so profit is total revenue minus total cost. That's the basic definition. But we can write that equation in a somewhat different way that can be helpful. Notice if you start with this definition, we can do some algebra. Okay? Anytime in algebra, you can do, um, you can always multiply by something if you also divide by the same thing. If you take your bank account and you multiply by 50 and then you divide by 50, you haven't changed anything. Okay? That's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna take total revenue minus total cost. That's what you have in parentheses here. And we're gonna divide both of those terms by quantity. Now, don't worry about why we're doing it. Just we can divide here by quantity if we do what? If we also multiply by quantity. So, what we're doing here is we're dividing both of these terms by quantity and we're multiplying both of them by quantity. So, we haven't changed anything. That's a valid thing to do. Not obvious why we want to do it, but it's a valid thing to do. Okay. So why do we want to do it? Well, total revenue is price times quantity. So in the, in the numerator here for total revenue, we're just going to subtract, substitute price times quantity. So that gives us profit is price times quantity over quantity minus we had total cost in the previous one we had total cost over quantity so we haven't changed that times quantity okay. notice these two quantities cancel out so we're just left with the price and total cost divided by quantity is our definition for what right there average average cost okay so by doing this little uh, algebraic trick we're able to convert this equation for profit into price minus average cost times quantity okay 
That's what we end up with. So notice now, <clears throat> just as this is our definition for profit, this is really the same definition. We've just stated a little bit differently, but that gives us some useful information okay? because we often know what the price is and, and when we talk about what the price is, that's how much revenue the firm is getting per unit. And it's very easy to think about and calculate average cost. If you're just taking total cost and spreading it evenly over the number of units, think about what this uh, equation tells us. Oops. If price, if price is greater than average cost, then this expression here, what's the sign of that going to be? If the price is greater than the average cost, then price minus average cost is going to be positive. You multiply a positive by the quantity your quantity you're going to get a positive number so if price is greater than average cost that means that profit pi just means profit profit is going to be positive the firm is going to make profit if the price is above the average cost if the price is below average cost what does that tell you about profit? It's going to be negative, okay? not just going down. It's going to be negative because it means on average, these units cost more than what the firm is receiving when they sell it on average. So you know, under these conditions, profit is negative, which means firm, the firm is losing money if price is equal to average cost, what's using the equation, what's the profit going to be? If price and average cost are equal, then price minus average cost is going to be what? Going to be zero, and zero times whatever is going to be zero. So if price is equal to average cost means your the firm is just just covering their costs and that means that profit is going to be zero so this is a very useful equation to remember it allows you to look at the firm's pr uh, price look at their average cost and from that determine what the profit is going to be so maybe put a star uh, by that equation <clears throat> and here we have uh, our graph again, or our, our chart. Uh, we already saw that average cost declines at first, and then it starts to go up. Uh, without looking at the charts, should the firm produce where price and average cost are equal? No. All you have to do is remember that one thing, the firm should produce where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Nothing else matters in determining the quantity. Should the firm produce where marginal cost, where average cost is at its lowest point? That has kind of an intuitive appeal. You, you, know, you want cost to be low, but notice if the firm was going to produce where average cost was in a minimum, then they would stop here at three or four units because they wouldn't want to produce where average cost was 17. Okay? But we've already said that profit is going to be at a maximum at eight because that is where marginal revenue and marginal costs are equal. So our MR equals MC rule says produce eight. If we're trying to minimize average cost, 
we would produce, we would stop way back here. Okay? Which one gives maximum profit? Well, let's just look at the numbers. Uh, we have profit being calculated here. If we stopped at four, then uh, profit would be $132. But if they produce the fifth unit, it goes up to 159. Produce the sixth, it goes to 180. Seventh, 194. Eighth stays at 194. Okay. So do they want all that extra profit? Absolutely. If they produce where average cost is at a minimum, they're going to be giving up a lot of profit. So they do not choose to produce where average cost is at a minimum. Okay. Sometimes they may end up there, but that's not what they focus on. The focus is on producing where MR and MC are equal. Okay. Uh, what if you're given this graph? What quantity will maximize profit? What could you say? $17.00. Well, one thing you'd have to say is I haven't really told you what the price is. So, well, there, but there's price of 50 here. Okay. So you have to know what the price is. Okay. Um, you would, the, the thing you want to avoid, you do not want to jump to the conclusion that, well, of course they're going to produce here because that's where their average cost is at a minimum. Okay. That's not the goal. The goal is not to minimize average costs. The goal is not to minimize marginal costs. The goal is not to minimize average variable. The goal is to maximize what? Marginal costs. Well, you don't want to maximize marginal costs. You want to maximize profit. Okay? See, the, the basics of you know, this analysis are, are pretty simple, but it's easy to get confused. The goal is, you know, because just go back and watch the video. How many times have I said the goal is to maximize total revenue? And the firm does that by producing at the quantity where MR equals MC. Uh, you know, I say that over and over, but it's hard for it to sink in. Okay? And it used to surprise me that people had so much trouble grasping it. It doesn't surprise me anymore because I've, you know, over the years I see it over and over and over, and I've come to realize you know, it really is hard for it to sink in when you haven't been looking at it for years and years and years. So I understand uh, it takes time. Here, you, see, I've, I've intentionally given you a graph where you would kind of your attention is drawn to this point. But that is not necessarily where the firm will produce. If you want to know what quantity to produce, you, your, your eye should look for where is MR equal to MC. And you're given marginal cost, okay? but you've got to know what is the price because that tells you what the marginal revenue is going to be. So here, unless you know the cost of 17, then Question? Okay. Okay. Um, given this graph, let's say, and I this is clearly saying that the price is fifty dollars, okay? and it says the MR is equal to the price, so that tells you this is a price taker. Uh, market firm can sell as much as it wants at the $50 price what quantity should the firm produce I'm sorry the firm should produce eight because that is where marginal revenue this is the point you look for that is where MR equals MC. That last unit 
adds just as much to revenue as it adds to cost. Okay? And that's where you want to stop. All the previous units added more to revenue than to cost, so they all added to profit. Went beyond that, they would add more to cost than to revenue, so you don't want to produce those. Notice in, we've got three different curves there, but in answering the question, what quantity to produce, you ignore the average cost curve. It's irrelevant. Uh, you own, it's a, a key to, to this analysis is to know, to be able to look at a complicated graph and to filter out what's not important. And if the question is, how much should be produced? You say MR equals MC, you look for the MC curve, you look for the MR curve, you find where those two intersect. You read down and you say, that's the answer. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. Okay. Now, once we know that the market price is 50 and the uh, profit maximizing quantity is eight, now how do we find the profit? Where is the profit in this graph? It's right there. Just have to recognize it. What's our equation for profit? Profit is total revenue minus total cost. That's our definition. And what's our new version of that? Exactly. Profit is price minus average cost times quantity. Price minus AC is giving you the profit being earned per unit. And you multiply by the number of units, that gives you the total profit. Okay? So you've got the price is 50. So this distance represents the price. Notice that from our equation, we got three things here that determine profit, price, AC, and quantity. So this gap is the price. How do we know what average cost is? I mean, it's it, average cost, it's a whole curve. Right, it, it's the total cost divided by quantity, but we got this whole average uh, cost curve, how do we know the numerical value of average cost in this situation? This is where people get stuck, but there's no reason to. Once you find where MR equals MC, then you know this is the quantity that's going to be produced. And that means Nothing matters other than what's on that vertical line. Okay. So just ignore the rest of the graph. Okay. Don't get distracted by the rest of the curves. Okay. You're only interested in what is this firm's average cost at the quantity it's going to produce. And it's going to produce eight units. So you read up, add a quantity of eight to the average cost curve, you read over and you see it's 25.75, okay? So whereas this distance is the price, that distance is the average cost, okay? So if you, if this whole distance If this whole distance is the price and we subtract off this distance, average cost, then that distance there would be price minus average cost. Okay. So this area or that interval there is price minus average cost. That's the per unit profit.
What is that distance? That is just the quantity. So if we take the rectangle formed by this point and that point, and then reading over to the axis, that I'll shade that in. Think about what the area of that rectangle is giving us. The vertical dis distance is the per unit um, profit. The horizontal distance is the quantity. The area of that rectangle is the per unit profit times the quantity, which means the area of that rectangle is just the profit. Okay? That's our profit rectangle. How did we find that? First, we found, and the sequence here is critical. If you don't do this in the right order, it's, it's hopeless. You find where MR equals MC, mark that, you read down, then you know that's the quantity. You know nothing matters except on that vertical line. You find the average cost. You've already got the price. That rectangle formed from those two points gives you the profit that this firm is earning. And mathematically, the area would be the, the profit. Okay? And just the fact that there is a rectangle there tells you that they are making positive profit. That's a really important thing to graph to understand because this is a graphical representation of our new profit equation there. Okay. Uh, you need to be able to take a graph, identify the, the price, the quantity, the average cost, and the profit. That's really, really important. Any questions on that? Okay. And here we have it uh, filled in. Uh, and the, the profit would be $50 minus the average cost, $25.75. Uh, times eight, this is the per unit profit, times the number of units that gives you the profit. What if I said, well, if this firm produces another unit, he'll get $50 for it. And his average cost will be a lot less than $50. So it'd be, it'd be profitable to go ahead and produce that next unit. He's making, uh, let's see what, $24 and a quarter per unit on average profit. So wouldn't he make more profit if he produced an extra unit? That can intuitively feel like, well, maybe, maybe that would be true but that is not correct. <clears throat> Average cost is not telling you what happens if you produce an extra unit. To decide how many units to produce, you've got to ask, if I produce another unit, what's going to happen to my cost? And what's going to happen to my revenue? And that means you're comparing marginal revenue with marginal cost. So it's very tempting if you're not accustomed to distinguishing between marginal cost and average cost, to, to be tempted to look at the wrong thing. That's why I keep emphasizing over and over, when you're trying to decide how many units to produce, you only look at marginal revenue and marginal cost. You don't look at the average. You do look at the average to calculate the profit, as we see here, but you don't look at average to calculate or to determine which quantity to produce. Okay. Simple idea, but it, it's really hard for people to not be distracted by other ideas. Firm will maximize profit by producing where average cost is at its lowest point. Is that necessarily true? Look at our graph here. Average cost is max is minimized here, but profit is maximized by producing eight. 
So this um, statement would not be correct. It, there may be some times where it would be, uh, they'll end up producing where AC is at its lowest point, but that's not what they have, that's not what they shoot for, okay? Uh, most of the time it will not be at that minimum point. A firm will maximize profit by producing where price equals average cost. That is false. In fact, if price equals average cost, what does it tell you about profit? That would guarantee that profit would be zero. So if you had a firm that said, this is what we're gonna do, then they would be shooting for making zero profit. That's not the same as trying to maximize your profit. Right? So just anything you can do to help yourself distinguish between marginal revenue, marginal cost, average cost uh, will be beneficial to you. The more time you spend looking at these things, the better off you're gonna be. If a firm produces at the output level where MR equals MC, it will always make a profit. The answer to that would be no. Uh, and that one's it's not as easy probably to see because we have emphasized the firm wants to produce where MR equals MC because that is where profit will be at a maximum but that's not a guarantee that the maximum profit will actually be positive. Sometimes the firm, it's not possible to make a, a profit uh, as we'll see in just a second. Uh, let's see. Uh, if average cost is greater than price, then the firm is going to lose money even when MR and MC are equal. So you wanna be sure you understand how it is that the firm could be producing where MR is equal to MC and yet have an average cost that's above the price. Okay? <clears throat> and the, what we're about to get into will help you understand that. Entry, exit, and shutdown decisions. Uh, when we talk about entry, that's pretty um, self-explanatory. That means that a new for a firm that does not operate in the market um, starts operating. They um, begin operations, they start producing. <clears throat> Exit is pretty straightforward as well. That means their firm decide, that a firm that has been producing decides not worth it and they go out of business. So you had the firm before, now it doesn't exist anymore. Shutdown is a little um, more complicated. When we talk about a firm shutting down, that's not the same as going out of business. What we mean by shutdown is the firm decides it's not worthwhile to produce any output right now. Uh, we're not going out of business. We're still gonna be a business, but we're not going to produce anything for a while. Yeah. So that's a, that's a short run kind of decision. That's right. They're, they're, they're not, exit is a long run decision. Exit, you're saying, you know, we're out of here. We're, we're not gonna, we're not gonna produce any more. We're not coming back. Shutdown is in the current period, we are deciding to produce a quantity of zero. We're still gonna be here, but we are, we're not going to produce anything in the current period. Think about a, um, <clears throat> a, um, um, the, the, uh, in a lot of, uh, um, hotels in the um, in a resort area, like in um, uh, Estes Park, um, Colorado, where the the hotel the, uh, in the movie The Shining is called The Overlook. Well, that's that's uh, the movie and the hotel is based on that uh, hotel, and in the movie it would close down for certain um, months of the winter because the uh, costs were greater than the revenues they would get because it was so hard to, to get there. 
So when they shut down during uh, those particular months, they're not going out of business. They're saying, we're not going to produce anything during this current period. Or if you have a, um, on a beach where they open up maybe during the summer months, but then in the, in the winter months, there's not as much uh, business. So they may decide we're not going to produce anything during the, uh, the off months, but we're not going out of business. We'll still be here. We'll come back uh, later, uh, but we're not going to produce anything for a, a period of time. That's what shutdown is referring. So we're going to be very careful to distinguish between going out of business, which is permanent, that's what is meant by exit, and a shutdown decision, which is temporary. <clears throat> Firms seek profits, we said. So in the long run, firms will enter the industry when price is greater than average cost. That seems obvious, but, but make sure you really understand it. Why is this true? Well, if price is greater than average cost, that means it's profitable. And that means that firms that are not in this industry, they're looking at this industry and they say, you know, if we enter this market, we will be able to charge a price that not only covers all of our opportunity costs, it's even higher than that. So having a price greater than average cost means that it's going to be profitable. And that means that the firm can do better in producing in this market than it could do if those resources were devoted elsewhere. That's a, a key thing about profit. If firms are making profit in an industry, it means they are doing better than they could do if they took their resources and deployed them elsewhere. And so since that uh, it means that if uh, it's profit, if profits are being earned in an industry, competitive industry, entry is going to occur. New firms going to come in. That's right. Every firm is we're assuming is trying to make profit. We're by the end of this chapter, we're going to see that that competition for profits causes profit to be eliminated. It's hard to make a profit. We haven't seen that yet, but we're, we're, we're getting close to it. And so firms are looking for profit opportunities. They're trying to figure out where can we use our resources where we will make a profit. And so when you have a market where profits are being earned, outside firms say they take note of that and they say, we want some of that profit. And so they have an incentive to enter that industry. It uh, This is... Um, it says in the long run, okay, it takes time to start a new business, to enter a new market. Uh, so it doesn't happen instantly, but it will uh, happen over time. And how long it takes, well, that will vary from one industry to another. Uh, if you're talking about um, uh, a snow cone business, well, you could you could start a new snow cone business pretty fast. If you're talking about um, a new auto plant uh, or a new restaurant, uh, it takes a while to, to do that. Right? Um, firms will exit an industry when price is below AC. Why is that? Well, price below AC, we know that tells you something about profit. If price is below average cost, then profit is negative. Firms are losing money. And what does that mean? To lose money means they can do better elsewhere. Um, we may be tempted to think, oh, well, this, you know, it's, it's terrible that they're losing money. It's terrible they're going to be forced out of business. Remember, it's not necessarily that they're forced out of business. They may be covering all of their explicit costs. To be losing money in an economic sense means there are some of their costs they're not able to cover. Uh, they may have a, a, a significant accounting profit, but the owner may be looking at the profit he's making and say, you know, I could be using my time elsewhere. I could be making a whole lot more than I'm doing here. So he says, it's not worth it. I can do better. Uh, price below AC 
That's really what it means. The owner concludes, I can do better elsewhere. And so the firm is going to exit the industry. Uh, often it will take time for the firm to do that because they may have a, uh, a lease for their, their building or their factory that obligates them for a period of time. Uh, so when you have long-term contracts, things like that, the firm cannot uh, instantly get out of all of those, um, those contracts. And so it may take time before they exit, but eventually they're gonna do that if the price is below average cost. This one you have to think about very carefully. If price equals average cost, then our equation tells us that means profits are zero. If profits are zero, what does a firm in the market have an incentive to do? They have an incentive to stay put. That's not the way most people would think of it because most people think in terms of accounting profits and they would think, well, if you got zero profit, then you can do better somewhere else. No, with, we're talking about uh, zero economic profit. And with zero economic profit, the firm is earning enough revenue to cover all of their costs. They can pay all of their bills and they are covering all of the owner's opportunity costs. So with zero, uh, with price equal AC, profits are zero, there is no incentive for other for new firms to come in because these firms aren't doing any better than usual, uh, but there's no incentive for the existing firms to leave because they can't do any better anywhere else. Okay. Um, zero, <clears throat> gotta just remind yourself, we're talking about zero economic profits. And if, if economic profit is zero, what does that tell you about accounting profit? Accounting profits are gonna be positive. So that's, you just got to remind yourself, this is not zero accounting profit. If it were zero accounting profit, then almost certainly the firm would, would choose to go out of business. But with zero economic profit, then um, they have no incentive to exit because they can't do any better anywhere else. Also notice zero economic profit is also called a normal profit. Uh, and the reason is because, as we will eventually see, in a competitive market, profit is going to be pushed down to zero. Zero economic profit <clears throat> is normal in a competitive market. Seems kind of strange because all the firms are doing everything they can to make as much profit as possible, but it's that competition that causes the profit to be pushed down to zero, as, as we will see. Okay. <clears throat> um, here we have our basic uh, cost curves, average cost, a U-shaped curve, marginal cost. We see what it looks like. And here we also have the average variable cost curve. Average variable cost we didn't actually define it, but it is just the firm's um, variable costs divided by the quantity. Okay? And so you're spreading those variable costs over the number of units that are being produced. And notice it also is an upward sloping line. Okay? Uh, one thing to notice here This point and that point. What is, what's interesting about that point right there? Is that the intersection of marginal cost and average cost, notice where that intersection occurs. That point where marginal cost uh, and uh, average cost are equal, 
what can you say about average cost? Average has been going down. We get to here, starts to go up. So the, ab the point where MC and AC are equal is also the point where average cost is at a minimum. So anytime you're drawing a graph, you want to draw it uh, correctly so it doesn't lead you to wrong conclusions. The marginal cost will cut or intersect the average cost curve at the lowest point. So if this is a firm's average cost curve, and I say draw in a marginal cost curve, then you would want to be sure that the marginal cost curve would go through that minimum point. It wouldn't be over here, it wouldn't be over here. Okay. The reason for that is that um, put in a num few numbers here. Let's say this is a uh, $40. Okay. If you've got a firm that's not producing very much, they're way back here, okay? Then their marginal cost is here. Their average cost is way up here. Okay? For these low levels of output, marginal cost is below average cost. Okay. When marginal is below average, the average will come down. It's like if you have an average of 90 uh, on your assignments in a certain class and on your next score you make a 70, what happens to your average? It goes down. It goes down. If, if your marginal score is below the average, your average comes down. If the marginal cost is below the average, then as you expand, the average comes down. That continues all the way up to here. Okay. If you go beyond that point, then the marginal is now above the average. And so as you expand, the high marginal starts pulling the average up, just as if you have an average of 80 and you make 90 on the next exam, then that high marginal score pulls your average up. So that's the kind of the math of why the marginal cost will intersect the average cost at the minimum point on the average cost curve. And the same thing would be true for the average variable cost curve. Okay, now, almost done. We're ready to think about the, the supply curve for an individual firm. Um, we talked a lot about supply curves, but we haven't talked about the supply curve for an individual firm. And we can now uh, reach a very useful conclusion. Think about what does the supply curve show you? It shows you how much the firm will produce for any given price. So what if The price is price is up here at um, seventy. Okay, that's the price line, which means it's also the marginal revenue line. So, how would you figure out the quantity that would give maximum profit? You'd say, where is MR equal to MC? This is the that's the price line. So it's all the, also the marginal revenue line. So MR equals MC would be at that intersection. So that's the, quant that's the point that determines the quantity that will be produced. Okay, let's say it's 100. If the firm produces 100 units, will it make any profit? Well, that depends on the average cost. So you read for 100 units, you read up to the average cost curve. You see the average cost is here. Maybe that's $50, price is 70. Is the firm gonna make any profit? Yes. 
So will the firm be willing to produce at a price of $70? Absolutely. Okay. Which means this point is a point on the firm's supply curve, which means that the marginal cost curve is actually the firm's supply curve. It's not the whole marginal cost curve, but it's a portion of it, okay? So this point and that point, all of these points are gonna be on the firm's supply curve. What if <clears throat> instead, I can't get it to move. What if, what if the price were down here? Let's say at um, $15, what would the firm do? First thing, decide what quantity should be produced if it's going to produce anything. And to find that, you go to where MR equals MC. So if this is the new price, then you would read over to here. That's where MR equals MC. Firm will choose to produce this quantity. Let's say that's 60 if it produces anything. But if it's producing 60, what is its average cost going to be? It's gonna be way up here, okay? So if the price is way down there, this is the quantity the firm would produce if it's gonna produce, but it's not gonna to choose to produce anything, okay? So these points are not actually gonna be on the supply curve. These points are, but what about the yellow part there? We're out of time. What we'll see next time is that the firm's short run supply curve is going to include all of those points. Okay? It's going to be the marginal cost curve down to and including the intersection with the average variable cost curve. And we'll explain the logic behind that next time. Uh, we will finish up chapter 11 uh, next time and should be able to get into chapter 12 um, some. Let me know if you have any questions. Okay, well, uh, do you have it? Okay. It's tricky with uh, PowerPoint because um, once you get into one mode, you can't, sometimes you can't, it's like I'm annotating and then I can't figure out how to move things around.